So I decided to look into the, the efficacy of visible body because of what I saw in my classes. I saw so much improvement in students and I wondered if it was just me <laughs> or if other people were, were experiencing similar things with, with this product. It was important to use multiple different institutions for this particular study. And we surveyed instructors. We actually still are trying to get more, more data. So if someone out there taught a semester with visible body and a semester without visible body before COVID, please reach out. Um, but we surveyed five different institutions. The class sizes ranged from 20 students to 200. Um, so big range. And what we really looked for is sites where there was not a lot of change in grading. The only change I wanted was the use of visible body. I wanted to look at the data from the participants. The majority of the majors of students that were represented by this study were nursing students. And the ones that weren't nursing students were interested in other health fields. So you've got a smaller portion of STEM students that's very typical of A&P courses. Um, the majority of the students were also freshmen, followed up by sophomores, so very early in their academic career. These are the students that typically need the most help um, in terms of performance because they're just, they're not as seasoned, they may not quite um, understand how to read a textbook for context. Um, and they may need a little bit more support there. When we look at the institutional data, most of the students were part-timers. Um, and this is a really interesting growing demographic. The reason why part-timers are interesting is that usually you've got working adults, um, parents, sometimes both, and they're, they're dealing with other things in their life and they're basically juggling. Then we also looked at Pell eligibility that gives you an idea of the socioeconomic status of these students. Um, all institutions had 31% or more Pell eligible, which means that we're dealing with students from sort of lower economic backgrounds. We got grade data and all these are is the end of semester grades of the students um, who either were in a semester that didn't use visible body or semester that did, it's the same instructor for both semesters and the same schools for both semesters. So the only switch is that visible body, whether or not it was used. And what I want you to see is in blue here, we have the percent of students with a given final grade. Now the things to pay attention to are right here we have a decrease in grades below 50. So the students are not getting those grades. And if you look here where the bars are getting a little higher, we've got a lot more students up in that A range, 90 and above. So those bars are much bigger than they were in the non-visible non body semesters. Um, this shift is actually statistically significant, which is kind of exciting. Um, although here it, should be noted that we're looking at aggregate data. What that means is that we just took the grades from everybody and we kind of threw them all in a pool rather than analyzing class by class. When we look class by class, um, I looked at the median grades. So I took the median grade from each school when visible body was not used and the median, median grade from each school when it was used and looked at the difference. The reason we looked at median is um, Kind of related to this first figure you'll notice it's it's skewed it's not pretty right around the center so if i look at median that's going to give me a better idea of of the center where the average would not be in the right place it'd be shifted so um, you'll notice the median grade without visible body is just below 80 percent which is actually pretty great i think um, but then when you put visible body in there, now your median grade is in the mid 80s, which is actually astounding. That means, you know, the majority of your students are, are Bs. That's fantastic. When we look at um, all of the grade sites individually, so I've got them just listed here, site one, site two, site three, site four, because we didn't want to, you know, call out our instructors. Um, this is looking at the change in mean grade and all I looked at was the average grade 
with visible body and I subtracted the average grade without it. So anything above zero, it means that it's better with visible body. If it's below zero, that means it's worse. And here you go. Um, all of our sites had an increase in grade. Three of the sites had a statistically significant increase in the, in the mean grade, which is really awesome. Um, and the average increase is 6.65%. So that's above half a letter grade. That's actually really excellent. Um, and as an instructor, that would have me doing cartwheels. One of the questions on our survey was, what are your cutoffs for A, B, C, D, F? Um, and how many students withdrew from your course? This creates what I call the visible body effect. The visible body effect is I look at the percentage of students in each of those categories with visible body and I subtract the without visible body. And that allows me to see what change was created in theory by visible body. Of course, you can have some change in the students from year to year, um, but by doing multiple sites, we kind of hopefully wash some of that out. So you'll notice here, this is our increase in A's um, at some institutions. In fact, the, the average difference was around 20%, which is absolutely staggering. Um, when we start to look at that median, it's above 10%. So you're getting a much higher number of A's. That's awesome. Where are the A's coming from? Well, we get an 11% decrease in B's. That's actually not enough to account for the change in A's. So it's not just B's moving up. It means we must be getting some of these C's moving up. It, it turns out that we actually, when we look at how many people have to move up to get this increase, um, we're probably pulling some from the even lower letter grades too, which is to me super exciting. My students that have used this product have said this is great because it's on my phone. I can use it during the lunch break. I can use it on my bus commute. I can use it. One of them was a boiler technician and he would use it while the boilers were emptying and refilling. So he had these down periods at work and it allows them to study in much smaller snippets. And I'm not going to bore you with the details, but it turns out that everything we know about human learning is that you are better off in smaller snippets. Your attention span is actually very short. It's 15 minutes or less. So if you're studying in 15 minute chunks, you're probably going to retain a little bit more. Teaching enjoyability. So this is just the instructor having more fun teaching. They rated it at a 4.8. So they really love to use it. Um, and I would agree with that. I don't use slides anymore. Now I, I project the models and I actually talk to my students and it is this wonderful, beautiful thing. Teaching ease is again about a 4.8. So they say it's much easier to use than a traditional textbook. The best parts of this, the students are more engaged, they're performing better, it's easier for the instructor and we can actually look at the grade data and we can say, yes, the students are legitimately performing better and we're retaining more in the course. So it allows the students to move through things as they are thinking about them within the context of a unit. So the instructor gives them that structure, but then the student is able to move through in a way that may make more sense to them and kind of capture the curiosity of the moment, which I think benefits learning further. Switching to this product is at least as good as, as a textbook and really our results are suggesting it's even better.